So this is the layout that I'm working on. I call it the Isle of Mud. It's a 7mm narrow gauge layout and I've been trying on this particular layout to scratch build everything. So that includes all the points. Uh, they're all made by hand. Every one of these sleepers has been either, it's either a um, copper clad every so often or it's a 3D printed sleeper that I've actually put in place. It's a pretty simple layout. Up on this top right, there's got to be a wagon works that's going to go in there. There'll be a station that comes in here. There's a couple of other buildings that have got to go in this section. And then over here is a carriage works. And off these other sidings, there's got to be a good shed and a, um, what was the other one? A post office, that was it. One of the things that I'm doing at the moment with the layout is just going through endless testing. Before I put all the ballast down, uh, I want to make sure that everything works correctly. Uh, so what I'm doing today with this um, piece here, you'll notice I've got a problem here. The engine keeps sticking. And what I need to figure out is what is going on. What I believe is going on is that where I have put the rail into the um, the plastic base of a feeling some glue has lifted up and it's just lifting the flanges off so I just need to be working on that today I will run the layout like this for some time while I'm building um, the various structures that go on some of the reasons for testing if I zoom in here um, you will see just here it doesn't show up very well. Maybe I need to show one of the things I've made upstairs. This is one of my homemade uncoupling magnets. It, uh, so it's basically two, is it nilibium or however you pronounce it, two magnets in a 3D printed base. I'm able to, I make them exactly the same height as the cork that the layout sit, the track sits on. The cork for me is not there for sound or anything like that. It just lifts it so the ballast looks better. But it allows me to cut out these sections to put the uncouplers in. And one of the things that's important when testing the layout is to make sure that things like those uncouplers are all in the right place. So I've got one there, there's another here, and uh, another further down here. And what I need to do is just check, is that enough? So I will run the layout to a sort of a timetable. And I just need to make sure that have I got all those uncouplers in the right place? As I've said, I'm testing the layout at this moment. One of the bizarre things is you see the loco going over the joint there. At the moment, if I just push the boards, you'll notice them coming apart. I haven't actually bolted the boards together yet. They're still um, all loose. Uh, that's deliberate because I've got to do some work underneath. But also, uh, in my opinion, when I build these things, I should just be able to push the boards together and it should work regardless. You know, the bolts are just a last minute thing that you know holds it permanently in place. But the, it's not the bolts that actually cause the alignment. I've obviously got alignment pins underneath to make sure that the tracks always line up. Now, because I'm a bit short on space, um, I'm using a traverser. <laughs> And the traverser basically works off my little touchscreen system. It's just going to index itself because it's the first time it's moved. And I can basically just select whichever track I want and off it will go. Um, I'm going to do a little tutorial on how I built this. But one of the issues that I've had and one of the things I want to do as I'm going through the build of the layout is not just show what went right. But what went wrong? And I'm just going to show you, hopefully, this will let me zoom in. Here is a bit that's gone wrong. Now, if you look, the track isn't 
perfectly aligned. Now, bizarrely, when I built this, it was. And the issue that I think I've got here is I built the layout in the middle of summer and the temperature has changed. Now, we don't think about temperature change as being important, but uh, what I've noticed is that the as it's moving further across, the adjustment is going slightly further out. And I think that's because if you probably can't see it in there, there is a threaded rod on a stepper motor that's moving this across. And I have a feeling this is due to the cold weather. It's freezing in this garage at the moment. That's actually causing that rod to change length. That's causing my issue. So this is the underside of the main traverser board. It's quite a simple system. Down here we have the Arduino. On here on the shield you can see I've got a stepper motor controller. This little bit of circuitry here is the DCC signal decoder. And then I've got a couple of other headers here that I'll be using later to um, control some uh, adjuster switches that I'm about to put in. Now, the way this works, if you look obviously at the top, you've got a stepper motor. And then as we come down, we've got this piece that connects obviously to the other side of the board that's moving the main bridge. But then just here on the edge, you can see this piece that sticks out. As it comes down to the bottom, you've got a photo interrupter and that's what I use to index the system. So this board in general is quite a, a simple board. Um, the issue that I have right now is what I'm finding is in the garage because it's so cold. I think this um, this rod here is altering in size very slightly with temperature. It might not, you know, we don't tend to think much about temperature affecting this sort of stuff. But by adding some adjuster switches in, I'm hoping to get rid of the problem. Now, for those who saw the video I took in the garage, you'll have seen that the tracks didn't align properly. Now I'm in my nice warm office. Look at that. Bang on. Move to the next track. Pretty much bang on. And so on. You see it starts to drift very slightly as we get further. And if I go to the other extreme... Now, if you're wondering why that little jump is at the end, that's because it indexes itself every time it pulls over to this one end so that if ever it misses a step, it resets itself. But as you can see, it's a fraction out. And this is to do now with, obviously, I've brought it in my office because it's warmer in here to work on. So what I need to do is figure out how I can sort this out. Now... Obviously, I can put some adjuster switches in so I can adjust all the settings. But as you can see, it's so close on that middle one now, whereas when it was in the garage, it was probably half a millimeter to a millimeter out. This is something that sometimes is a particular problem that I've got to deal with because this is an exhibition layout. That means it's going to be stored in a cold garage. It's then going to get get put in a car that's going to get warm. It's going to take get taken out of a warm car into a cold exhibition hall, which later they'll load full of people and it will become warm. So obviously things can be expanding and contracting all the time. So I've got to make sure that I can have a system that can keep this running smoothly. So that's the adjustments that I'm going to work on right now. Now the bit I couldn't video is myself soldering and programming um, it's just too complicated to do in one go so this is just an overview of what I've done if you remember this was the board I used two capacitive touch switches uh, I just happen to like this type of switch you don't need any uh, pull up or pull down resistor with them 
uh, with no moving parts so again they're not going to go wrong and they just clip on to these two headers now this little bit of the video may seem a little bit odd to you um, as you can see we've got Maybelline seven days gel nail color what on earth has this got to do with model railways well if you notice I have put a red mark on the plug this is actually on the VCC pin and where it fits into the socket let's just get that out of the way you can see I also mark that in red now believe it or not nail polish is great for this stuff my wife's got loads of old stuff that she doesn't use and so I can use the different colors to mark up different plugs and it makes sure that I plug the thing in the right way round so bit of nail polish very very useful for your model railways so this is just a look under the board at the final installation as you can see I 3d printed a little holder to put the little circuit board inside I have these uh, I think they're cabinet making plugs or something I've no idea I just find them very useful for putting up putting over the cables to hold them all in place um, the installation is fitted just under the front of the board that way I can uh, get my fingers under to press these buttons but I'm not going to accidentally touch them because obviously they're not something that you want to be pressing accidentally because it'll mess the settings up one little bit that I have done in the code is to make sure that these buttons can only be pressed when the traverser is not moving and has been indexed and is at a distinct location so you can't just press these buttons and they'll work anytime there has there are certain sets of conditions that happen that have to happen to make them work so that's basically how I've got round this problem so for this example I've exaggerated the distance that the tracks are out I'm now going to use the little adjuster buttons it's in the right direction there we are and now when it comes back to that position it's perfect well I hope you found that one interesting and if you've got any questions just put them in the comments on the YouTube site or back on the Digital Town website and if you did enjoy it don't forget to click the like and subscribe. See you for the next episode.